Welcome back to the wood shop. My name is Brett. Today we're going on a field trip. We're going to the job site. So come on. Are you coming? Here's how far I got before I went back to the shop to make the mantle. I built this wall out and just installed the first two rows of the shiplap so I could install the power outlet. And the cleat's gonna be mounting to this and the bottom of the mantle will be resting on the stone. And then the top of it will meet up to this. So we got kind of a stair step there. Now that I've gotten a closer look at it, I'm actually gonna remove this drywall so that we're mounting right to the studs. After removing the drywall above the stone, my first step was to find the center of the fireplace so I could center the mounting cleat. Then I also found the center of the mantle and marked that on painter's tape. Next, I put a laser level plumb line on the center line on the bricks and made another center line on the wall so I could match everything up. Before test fitting, I put blue tape on the mantle where the studs of the mounting cleat would be because I knew that I was going to have to trim them down so that the mantle would fit flush against the wall. I marked the distance of the gap and added an eighth of an inch at each stud location so it wouldn't bottom out. The frame that the fireplace was built around wasn't exactly square to the back wall. The side closest to the camera was actually a half inch further out than on the left side. Then I took the mounting cleat out to the table saw, adjusting the fence for each stud to match my measurements. To an issue. I anticipated having to trim the cleat studs down to clear this ledge. What I didn't anticipate is that the blocking inside the beam was going to prevent the cleat from nesting in fully. With a cleat wedged in place and then I hold it back up here, I still got uh, about a half inch gap all the way along. That means I'm going to have to either notch out the cleat or the blocking to get it to sit in there fully and allow the top of the beam to meet up to the wall. That's going to be a pain. No, I didn't do all this with a handsaw. I first made several cuts on the table saw, which was kind of a wonky process because the studs were sticking out. A circular saw probably would have been easier, but I forgot to bring mine back to the job site. This chisel is super dull and beat up, but I got it to work. Well, thankfully that worked. Now with the test fit, the, the cleat 
slides all the way up to where it is supposed to be and the top edge fits flush against the wall. Thankfully I didn't have to go back and forth, I did it in one shot. Next I propped up the cleat so I could drill the mounting holes into the fireplace frame behind it. Then I clamped it in place. I started with a pilot hole of a smaller diameter, then I used an auger bit that was the same size as the leg screws that I'm using to mount the cleat. These auger bits have a screw tip on them that pulls the bit into the wood. So you have to actually put the drill in reverse to get it to back out. Otherwise it'll keep pulling forward. After I made all these holes, I discovered the hole was too big and the leg screw had nothing to bite into. That size was fine for the cleat, but I needed to use a smaller bit for the frame behind it so the screw would still have some wood to grab into. Now I'm just checking to make sure all the surfaces are matching up properly before I nail it in place. The mantle isn't perfectly flat, so I needed to scribe the first piece of shiplap. To do that, I flipped the piece downside up so that I could mark where it meets the adjacent side piece, which will show me where to make my cut. I did that on both ends. Then I attached a strip of blue tape between the two marks. Next I shot a laser line between the two marks and found the shortest distance between the mantle and the laser line. The mantle crowns in the middle and there's a gap on both ends. So in the middle, the shortest distance was 27 millimeters. Then I made a small spacer block that was 27 millimeters high and I used that to run a nice sharp razor down the length of the tape. 
That gave me a precise cut line with a clear contrast between the whiteboard and the remaining blue tape. Here you can see the gap on both ends. Then I went out and cut close to the line with a jigsaw and then followed that up with a power sander with 40 grit sandpaper to get right up to the tape, adding a slight bevel to the back side of the board so that just the front edge would be resting on the mantle. There you go. Well, the customers are really happy with their mantle, which makes me happy. I think it looks really good. It looks a lot better than what they had before. Now the last thing I have to do for their project is to make four floating shelves that match the mantle so that'll go on either side of the fireplace. Sounds like another video. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you can be notified when that video comes out. So until next time, my friends, be safe and love each other.